Many of my patients with mitochondrial disease have cyclic vomiting syndrome. Many of those that don't have cyclic vomiting syndrome will develop it later. I get dizzy and nauseous and shaky, and I can't really keep anything down. Cyclic vomiting syndrome is a really awful condition. Um, often happens in kids, but it can occur at any age in which the patient will have an episode of very severe nausea. These episodes are stereotypic, meaning that in each patient, it's their episode. She would vomit for days, nothing would stay in. And we would watch her get more and more lethargic as time went on. Kind of flu-like symptoms of vomiting, fatigue, pain. You have this child who appears on the outside most days to be healthy, and then she would go into these cycles of vomiting and be completely lethargic, and you'd be carrying her into the hospital and not know what was going on. She had something that just seemed like a bout of food poisoning, but this went on for quite a few days. Often patients will have episodes for multiple years before the diagnosis is considered. Within two months, she had an, a repeat episode. The patients will go through these episodes over and over and over again, often go into emergency rooms or being admitted for hydration. It seemed like we were never out of a cyclic vomiting cycle. I was often having episodes like every other month, and then it was every month, and then like basically every couple of weeks. I can be standing there and I'll just get sick to my stomach and then that's the start of a cycle and I'll be perfectly fine before and it just kind of comes out of nowhere. When she's in an episode, she's in it 100%. When she's out of it, she's out of it 100%. The main thing with cyclic vomiting syndrome is the level of nausea. And these episodes are really horrible, and particularly the children, they curl up in a little ball and they won't speak to anybody and they're just in complete misery. The medical community is not in tune with cyclic vomiting syndrome at all. It took us five years to get a diagnosis, and we were going to neurologists, nephrologists, her regular pediatrician, and still no answers. Many diagnoses that patients will get are stomach flus, migraines, psychiatric conditions, and just they have no idea why the patient is vomiting. As a mom, you are completely helpless to do anything for your kid. And that um, has to be the worst position to be in because there's nothing you can do to make them feel better. She could be fine and happy or we could be in the hospital tomorrow. There's just no rhyme or reason for it. Even though she looks healthy and she looks like she's full of energy, she really isn't full of energy and she really isn't healthy. Identifying that there's an underlying mitochondrial component to cyclic vomiting is usually very helpful. She went into remission for two complete years. No CVS episodes whatsoever for two years. In genetic testing, we can find, in many cases, the exact cause of the mitochondrial dysfunction and cyclic vomiting in the patient, and then direct therapy towards it. Now it's been almost a year with no episodes, which is really good. We got the results of the DNA testing, and we tried this medication, and within days, I'm having a conversation with my son in a way that I could never have before. I guess I kind of feel like it's a new beginning. Have it done. Have the cortigen test done. It's, you know, it's gonna do nothing but help you. It's super easy and super fast. We got the kit and we just filled out the paperwork and then Haley just spit into a cup. It was really simple and you just package it all up and send it in. Don't feel hopeless because there's always hope and there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. You won't be sick all the time.